going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Russo Mod. In this video, we're going over the entire cost aspect of our 1968 C10 build. Now, if you're not familiar with this build, this is a 1968 C10 that is on a 2007 Cadillac Escalade frame, so it's all-wheel drive. And not only is it all-wheel drive, is it has a turbocharged LS3 in it, and it makes 700 horsepower to all four wheels. So with the C10 build videos, we've got a great response of guys that actually wanna do builds like this, and I thought it would be a really helpful video to go over all the costs that goes into something like this. Now I wanted to see how cheap we could actually do this build. So the first thing we're gonna go over is how we could do this at a more budget-oriented build. Now I think most guys wanna do something a little bit more custom and wanna to try to take it to make their own, so I'm gonna go over a, a tier two build where we can go over what different wiring harnesses you could use for it, what different transmissions you could use, what different model Escalades, Suburbans, or Tahos you could use to try to make one of your own all-wheel drive C10s or four-wheel drive C10s or any Chevy truck under a old Chevy C10 like this. And finally, at the end, we're gonna cover my entire C10 build to show you guys what all went into it, what all the costs were, and what things that I wish I kind of did earlier or what things I didn't get to yet so I can try to go over and break down what kind of cost it was. It may surprise you because something like this you would think costs a ton of money but it actually wasn't too bad once you break it all down and you plan out the build that you're doing. So let's get started. All right, so to start, I wanted to kind of go over how you could build one of these trucks budget oriented because I think that's kind of what most guys that are doing this would like to do is to save as much money as they could. So, whenever I was looking for my C10, I chose a 2007 Cadillac Escalade, but you could go to the earlier body style and it's very similar. The only difference is, is a little bit difference in the steering, there's some rear suspension changes, and then the front suspension doesn't have torsion bars on the earlier model, but the 07 and up actually has coil springs instead of the torsion bars to make it ride a little bit better. Now, the first thing that you need to do whenever you're finding one of these builds is you wanna find a C10. Now, if you know anything about C10s in this age, they're very hard to find and very expensive, but you could find them if, if they have a little bit of rust damage and stuff like that, you can get them relatively cheap. So what I was thinking is if somebody really wanted to do this with a budget oriented build, they could grab a C10 a little bit rougher than this one and do some metal work and stuff. And you could probably get one of those for around maybe 500 bucks, around 700 bucks, depending if it's a long bed or not. Now, if you wanted to do a long bed build, you, it is possible to do it with suburban style chassis. But in our case, we're doing a short bed and it seemed like most guys want to do a short bed anyway. But if you want to do a long bed, it would be even cheaper because you wouldn't have to find a short bed. Now, if you do find a short bed, you are going to spend a little bit more money but you could probably budget it in there if you're gonna do some metal work to it and stuff like that. They do make all aftermarket parts for these trucks. They're very easy to find parts for. Now you can do these on square bodies and older C10s, but well, I'm gonna cover the 67 to 72 C10 just because that's what we're doing here. But all those other T10s do fit on these frames and they fit pretty well. And there are a bunch of guys that have done that and I'll link some down in the description below so you can kind of check those out also. So I think that you could get a C10 for say around a thousand bucks. Depending on getting a thousand dollar C10, you're definitely gonna have to do some metal work to it. They, they rust really bad in the rockers and they rust really bad in the floor pan. So you're gonna have to take that into account. The beds also rust really bad as well, but what's nice about a C10 is the beds unbolt. So that way, if you want to do new bed sides, you can do that and you can find those on Automel Direct or LMC and stuff like that. And they supply all that stuff. So you could probably save yourself a little bit of work there. Now, the next thing that you're going to want to do, especially if you're going to do one of these builds a little bit budget oriented, probably the best option is to go with the older style Escalade or Tahoe or Yukon. Now you could find a older Escalade just personally, I had bought one recently for around 700 bucks, and it was the short style wheelbase, so that would have worked under this. You would just have the older suspension and you wouldn't have the rack and pinion and other stuff, but it would work fine right underneath one of these older C10s. I know a lot of guys that are running that, and it works really well. Now in these older Escalades, you're gonna have the six liter. If you go with a Tahoe, you'll probably have a 5.3. And if you have a Yukon, you'll have a 5.3, but if you have a Denali, you also have the six liter. Now those are a little bit more desirable, but a cheaper route is to just get a Tahoe. But if you get a Tahoe, you're technically not all wheel drive. It would just be a push button or floor shifted four wheel drive. 
So if you really want to go all wheel drive, you're going to need to find an Escalade or a Denali to do your chassis swap with. So hypothetically, if you wanted to find a C10, I say you could probably find one for around a thousand bucks. And then you could go and find an Escalade for around 700 bucks to a thousand bucks. And you probably have a pretty good donor. Now, what's nice about doing something like this is you can sell all the parts that you don't need off the Escalade to cover some of the costs of the build. So for instance, I used to part these things out a ton. I used to be able to sell the bodies, the doors, the inside interiors, and in most cases, the engine and transmission. But in this case, we're obviously gonna keep that for our build. So most of the stuff you can make some of your money back on, and that will go into either radiator or brake booster or whatever other kind of stuff you wanna to do to your build. So you have $1,000 for this C10 and 700 bucks for the Escalade. Now in theory, you could just pull the entire Escalade wiring harness and everything out of it, wire it up exactly like it is in the Escalade and just put the body on top of it and you would have a running and driving C10 with an Escalade swap. It would be very cheap, I think you could do it and that might be something that you would look into if you wanna do more budget oriented. But you're gonna be stock LS, stock everything and that might be fine for some guys. I know a lot of guys that just wanna cruise it around and have more reliable drivetrain and a nicer ride. So that would probably be a best option for them. Now, the other thing that you're gonna to have to worry about is the radiator in the old Escalade and the new Escalade it doesn't really fit too well in the C10 core support. So you probably wanna find a radiator. So I did find my radiator actually on eBay for 180 bucks, but you can shop around and see which one's best for you. And it does bolt right into the C10 core support. Now the brake booster and other stuff like that, it, you're gonna have to use on the C10 and steering columns and other stuff. You could probably get to work on the Escalade, but I actually use the Motion Raceworks steering column and I use uh, aftermarket brake booster. So that way it just bolts right to the firewall and then I can just hook in my power brakes with that. Now you are gonna have to use some harness in the C10. I recommend just buying an entire chassis harness. You can usually get those around 500 bucks to 700 bucks and they work really well. They just plug and play. A wiring harness is all laid out with wires labeled. So if you wanna connect your C10 cab to your Escalade harness, you can do so pretty cheaply if you keep the entire stock motor and transmission harness and then just connect a new C10 harness to that. So if you wanted to go extremely budget with this build and you didn't wanna spend any other money, I tried to calculate everything that I could to be able to get you the cheapest way that you could build one of these trucks. So I'll say you could sell some parts off the Escalade and wind up with $500 in the Escalade. Then you spent $1,000 to $700 on your C10. Then you're at least gonna spend $750 on a wiring harness and you're gonna have to spend $200 on a radiator and probably $150 in a brake booster and then another maybe 200 bucks on a steering column. So I think you could really budget one of these trucks for around $4,500 to $3,500. Now that's a pretty good deal for a completely custom vehicle, but, in, but keep in mind, you're gonna have to do probably a lot of body work on the C10 if you get one that cheap, and you're probably not gonna find the best Escalade or Tahoe or whatever chassis that you're gonna use underneath. And you are gonna have to do a lot more fabrication, but it will probably save you some more money to do all the work yourself. So that might be a good option for you. So now I kind of want to break down a build where it's not a complete hot rod and turbocharged build like this, but one that's a little bit more in depth that you could customize a little bit more than the budget one and has a little bit more hot rod if you wanted to add a cam or do some other stuff like that. So I'll call this the average build C10. Whenever I get messages on Instagram and Facebook of guys that have seen the videos that want to build a C10 just like mine, this is kind of what I would pitch to them to be more of an average build because not everybody needs 700 horsepower. A stock LS with a cam makes plenty of power for the average guy. So my Escalade was around 4,000 bucks and I spent a little bit more money to be able to get a decent one that I knew had lower miles. I also wanted the aluminum block LS3, I wanted the rack and pinion, and I wanted the modern, more updated Escalade frame. Now my C10 was around $2,000. I got one that was a pretty good deal, but it was originally a long bed. So I did have to source and find a short bed that I put on the frame later. So that way I didn't have to spend the short bed C10 money. And I ended up buying my C10 for around $2,000 and then added a $500 onto the C10 when I found the bed. So $500 for the bed, and 
$2,000 for the C10. Now I did sell around $2,000 worth of Escalade parts, so that helped a ton when funding the rest of the build, especially the cam and the turbo and stuff like that really helped out a ton. And I also sold my old C10 bed for around 700 bucks because my C10 wasn't too rusted and it was an original paint truck. So it wasn't a really bad candidate to start with, but I ended up going with the short bed anyway. So I didn't need the old bed. So I ended up selling that for 700 bucks to cover some of the costs of the build. Now I figured you guys would want to do more of a modern convenience with carpet and stuff like that. The carpet kit I bought in my truck was around 400 bucks and that's probably about the average C10 carpet. It just lays right in, got it from LMC. It also came with some sound deadener and stuff like that, which helps out the interior quality a little bit. Now seats on the C10, you can range from $1,000. I got mine for probably 200 bucks, but depending on your taste of what you want to do with it, probably around $500 for seats. The harness, like I said before, was around 750 bucks to get the entire C10 harness to work with it. Now you can use the old C10 harness, but I wouldn't recommend using the glass fuses, especially if you're going to this length. I would probably just opt out for a modern C10 harness. Now I am running a Holley Terminator X on this car, and that's probably what a more customizable option would be for guys. So if you want to run the Holley Terminator X, it's around $1,500 if you wanna get the transmission controller. Now, if you're running a newer Escalade, like a 07 and up, the Holley Terminator X doesn't cover the six speeds that they're using in those. So I actually got a 4L80 in mine, and it works really good, it holds a lot more power. But the 4L80 was around 800 bucks I got used off Facebook Marketplace. Now you are gonna spend a little bit on a radiator. So like I said, you're around $200 on a radiator. And another thing that guys want to do is they want to lower it just like mine. So I actually got coilovers from Max Beating Rods for around 300 bucks. And then I had to get the control arms to adjust the camber. So that was around 700 bucks. So if you want to spend a little bit more money and go with this more average build, I would say, you're probably looking around to spend from 10 to $15,000 for whenever you get one of these things going down the road. Now, if you watch the other videos, you saw how it's very simple to put the cab and the bed and everything on the front clip all together. So that stuff isn't really hard if you want to do this yourself. Now around ten dollars to $15,000 is what you're going to spend to probably get a decent C10 on a Cadillac Escalade frame with the newer Escalade and running a Holley Terminator, a little bit more modern interior and some other conveniences like that. You're really not that bad in the whole world of hot rodding. $15,000 can't even really get you a new car these days and you get a complete custom vehicle that drives like a pretty new car. So I think it's a really, really good deal and you'll have something that nobody else has with the all-wheel drive and stuff like that. So now I'm gonna take you around my C10 and show you guys some stuff that I did a little bit differently and show you guys how much it costs to build mine. Now before I go through my C10, make sure you comment down below if you guys have any questions on the builds or anything like that that regarding a build that you wanna do. I'm more than happy to help respond to questions and stuff like that. Also follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Mod, and I'll link them right here and you can contact us that way. I'm really responsive with helping people out with builds like this. So if you got any questions, let me know down below. I'm more than happy to help. Also a quick reminder to check out our patina party. If you guys are in the area and have a patina hot rod, we're hosting a patina party car show at Maryland International Raceway on August 13th. So we wanna see a bunch of cars like the C10, like the Rambler, like the Jeep that we're building. Just a hot bunch of hot rod patina cars that don't necessarily get the love that they deserve. We wanna show them off on August 13th at Maryland International Raceway. And I'll link all that information down below. All right, so let's get into my C10 to show you guys how much it costs to build this thing. All right, so just going over the truck initially. Now, like I said, this truck was originally a long bed C10 and I didn't have to do hardly any body work to it at all. It was a really good deal, I think. I got it for 2,000 bucks, and it's pretty hard to find these things in pretty decent shape. Not that this one is perfect, but you know, we're Rusto Mod, not Rusto Mod. So it does have, you know, some paint flaking. It's got some big dents in it and stuff. It does have some, you know, rust in the cab corners like they do. The rockers are starting to rust, stuff like that. But overall, it wasn't too bad. So I was pretty happy with how it looked. The top isn't, rotted or anything and I believe this is the original paint so it's a pretty good shape C10 now like I said 
I did sell the bed off of this truck. It originally was a long bed C10 and I found this bed on Facebook Marketplace and it was black originally and I ended up just spray painting it blue. And it looks pretty good, it matches all right. It good enough for what I do with it. I'm not really too particular about it. So I did have to put a little bit of money into the bed to get it to where I wanted. So that cost a little bit more. And if you guys saw, we did do this boat deck custom bed floor so that costs a little bit too and i'll go over that but overall the truck wasn't too bad when i first got it and it didn't need too much body work or anything like that to be modified to put onto this frame now we did have to cut out the transmission tunnel and raise it up so that's something that you guys are going to have to do if you want to run like a 4l80 or a modern transmission but it's not too bad and they actually make high hump C10s. So if you could source one of those, you probably wouldn't have to modify that at all anyway. So right off the bat, my C10 was 2000 bucks and then I actually got a Cadillac Escalade for 4000 bucks. So it was a 120,000 mile Escalade. It actually had a cracked transfer case in it and that's why I got it pretty cheap. It wasn't too many miles and I did rebuild the entire motor and that was probably the majority of the cost. And I did part out the entire Escalade and got some money back. So all the money that I got back, which was around $2,000, covered everything I did to rebuild the entire engine. So I ended up going through the entire motor in this thing and I put new rods, I put new valves, I put new valve springs. I redid everything on the motor, put a cam in it and all this stuff from Texas Speed, dual valve springs, uh, Millings oil pump, all everything pretty much in the motors rebuilt arp head studs and everything like that just because i knew i was going to boost it so i gapped the piston rings and stuff like that so get ready for boost so in the motor i spent probably around 3500 dollars from just the cam and all that stuff to get it rebuilt intake and all of that so around $3,500 in the motor, which I don't think is too bad. A lot of these motors cost quite a bit of money. So especially an LS3 aluminum block, that's pretty much brand new now. I think that was a pretty good deal. Now this turbo is an S475 Borg Warner and I got this thing off Summit for around 700 bucks. And I thought that was a pretty good deal. It's not the best turbo in the world. There's, you can definitely get more expensive ones, but $700 for my first turbo on an LS was probably all I wanted to spend just cause I didn't know how a uh, turbo LS even worked. So I thought it was a really good entry level turbo. So I got that for around 700 bucks. Now we made the rest of the kit by ourselves, but we got these headers that work really well with the turbo kit that we have on here. And they clear the truck manifolds and we got those for around 200 bucks. So we had all of the three inch pipe laying around from the Rambler build. So we just reused most of that but I'd say an exhaust kit like that would probably cost you probably around another $200 to get all the three inch pipe. And then we have a five inch exhaust going from the turbo all the way out the back. And that actually was a Cummins diesel exhaust that we refitted to make it work on this build. And that was around 800 bucks for that. So kind of have quite a bit of money in exhaust on this build for the entire turbo setup. Also including the wastegate and the blow off valve probably have a few thousand dollars there. And I'll put up a spreadsheet of all the costs at the end so you guys can see how much everything costs. The intercooler I have is a CX Racing C10 intercooler and I got that online. I think it was around $300. I'll put that price, that real price up here so you can see how much it was. And that will fit pretty well. It just bolted right in place. Only other thing I have on here is the external oil cooler and I got that on Amazon. I'm pretty sure that was probably like 150 bucks. It wasn't too expensive. Now, the other thing that you're gonna have to do is if you don't have your in your C10 already, like I only had a the manual brake master cylinder on mine, is I opted for the power brake booster. So the power brake booster I probably got for around $300. You can find these on Summit all day. They just bolt right up to the firewall and then you can hook them to your motor. Now, if you want your C10 to be as low as mine, you can try to find some better coilovers than I did. These, not ne these aren't necessarily the best, but it rides fine for now. So I found these coilovers for $300 on max peating rods and they work to get the ride height and I've been running them for quite a while and they're not too bad. They're very floaty for what I prefer. So you can probably find a better set of coilovers online. 
but if you're gonna go this low, you are going to have to do the control arm replacement. And I'll link that video up here so you can guys see how I fixed the camber issues that we we're having on this truck. If you lower it this low, you're gonna have severe camber. So I had to get aftermarket control arms to be able to correct that. And those were around $700. So let's move on to the interior. Now I got these seats also on eBay for around $200. And I'll link those down below. A lot of guys like these seats and ask me where I got them. I put them in pretty much everything. They're pretty cheap race seats and I really like the color. Kind of goes with all the kind of patina builds that we build. So those were pretty inexpensive. The dash and gauges were pretty expensive. The, ga the dash and gauges, we did spend some money trying to mount them in here. We got all these gauges on Amazon. There are name brand gauges. So with the gauge panels, it was probably around $700 with all the gauges mounted because we did 3D print a custom panel here to mount our Holley Terminator screen. Now you are gonna have to run a shifter in your car. I opted for a BNM shifter and it's worked pretty well. I think I got it on Amazon for around 200 bucks. Now we did run a dash pad I got on LMC. I think that was around 150 bucks. And we did run the LMC carpet kit and we have the sound deadener underneath. So that whole kit was probably around 350 to $400 for the entire carpet kit with the sound deadening. Now we are running a full cage in this thing. And it's nice to have a C10 because they make so much stuff for it. But we actually ended up buying this cage for around $350 and we got it from Summit. So I think that that's a pretty good deal for a pre-bent cage. We did have to modify the cage quite a bit in the back to get the seats to fit right and the hoop to get it as close to the dash as we could. And we actually had to bend these down bars and stuff. But if you get an affordable bender, you can do it in your garage and it's really not too bad to do. So we actually did the whole cage for under $500 and I think it came out pretty good for the amount of money that you'd normally spend on getting a custom cage in an old truck like this. Now we are running a Holley Terminator X in this build. We are running the X Max to be able to do the transmission control and we're running American AutoWire C10 harness. So that way it can control the entire cab. Everything was labeled and it plugs right into where the stock C10 harness was and we wired in the Terminator X into that harness. Very easy to do. So the Terminator X is around $1,500 if you get the max, depending on which one you get. And then the American Auto Wire harness is around $700 if you get the one with all the labeled ends and stuff like that. Speaking of the Terminator Max, I am running a 4L80E transmission. And if you saw the other videos, saw us having a bunch of issues with my old 4L80, I ended up getting rid of that transmission, sending it back to the manufacturer. I'm still running the Craigslist $800 4L80E. I got it back in the truck and it shifts perfectly. And I've had no issues with it, with the amount of power that we're running. It apparently was rebuilt with higher horsepower clutches and some stuff like that. And it has an aftermarket converter in it. I got it for 800 bucks. So I thought that was a really good deal. I know you could spend up to four to $5,000 on transmission, depending on how much power you want to run with these. But I think my transmission will hold for a little bit, but obviously not everybody can find a good deal like that. If you want to run a turbo setup on a C10 like this, you're probably going to spend around three to $5,000 on a 4L80 to be able to hold that kind of power. Now moving on to the bed of the C10, I did get this bed off a different truck and I bought the bed itself for $500. It had to do quite a bit of work to it. It wasn't in the best shape. You can see it still has some rust issues where the bed sides bolt up to and we had to modify some things. So to be able to fit on the C10 frame, we did have to cut out some spacers to widen the step side bed. If you want to go to a fleet side, I'm pretty sure it'll just pop right on. But if you want to do a, well, a step side bed, you are going to have to widen the fenders and that'll probably cost you some money or fabrication time to be able to ma machine a spacer or to just cut the fender and then widen it. So you are going to have some fabrication time in that. But I'd say I probably have around a thousand dollars in the bed because we are doing the boat decking and we're doing the aluminum panels in here, the stick on boat decking. So to complete the bed look, it was probably around a thousand dollars. Now I did actually add a roll pan to this, which I found on Amazon for 150 bucks. And I think it really completes the rear of the truck. It looked kind of incomplete before, 
So I'm pretty happy with the way that it came out. So let's look up under the bed and show you guys the fuel system that I have in this truck. Cause that's where a lot of the money that I didn't even realize I would have to spend is spent. Now I got this awesome fuel cell from Rhodes Race Cars and these guys make in tank pumps for E85. And I am running E85 on this, which if you guys don't wanna run E85, it'll probably save you some money. Cause you have to get certain lines that won't deteriorate with the E85. PTFE AN lines, and I'm actually running aluminum lines all the way to the front of the cab. So that kind of stuff is definitely some money spent. The tank here is a 20 gallon, and I spent probably around $800 on this tank. Now all the AN lines and all this other stuff that you have to run is gets pretty expensive. These fittings are a lot of money. So if you look at Earl's or Summit or Jegs or whoever else sells AN lines, they're not cheap. I ended up getting some aluminum. Uh, I ended up getting some aluminum fuel lines to be able to save some money. They're a lot cheaper, but it's a lot. It's a little bit more difficult to run because they're pretty brittle. But if you can run them up to your, but if you can run them the entire length of the vehicle, it saves you quite a bit of money without running PTFE lines the entire way, which are pretty pricey. So with the entire fuel setup, I probably have around with our injectors. I probably have around $2,000 in the fuel setup because I'm running the Snake Eater injectors and our Dietzworks fuel pressure regulator and all the lines and the fuel cell and stuff like that. I would say we probably have $2,000 to $2,500 just in the fuel system alone. It gets quite expensive. I didn't even realize that because this is the first turbo build I've ever done when E85 and it does get pretty pricey. Lastly, our wheel and tire setup. I'm running the GM transport wheels, which I feel like fit these chassis swaps really well, because if you don't know, GM actually uses these wheels to transport the vehicles from the factory to the dealerships. And you can pick these things up. I got these ones for around $300 and then some tires on there. But since they use them to transport them, they bolt right up to the Escalade frame. And I feel like they look like old school steelies but have a little bit bigger stance. And I really like the way that they look. So that's what I'm running on these for now. I am probably gonna switch to a little bit lighter wheel and tire whenever I go to the drag strip. But for just cruising around the street, I really like the way these transport wheels look. All right guys, well I know this is probably a lengthy rambling video, but I thought that it would help some guys building these kind of builds. I get a ton of comments and a ton of messages asking how much does it cost to build one of these things and what does it take? Detailed oriented builds like this always cost a lot more money than you're anticipating. I'll put up the entire spreadsheet I have here of everything that I've spent on this vehicle. Now I know I probably have missed some things, but this is a good rough estimate. For everything that I've spent on this vehicle, and I'm sure I've missed, I'm sure I've missed some stuff, I'm probably around twenty-two dollars to $23,000 but still for a custom 700 horsepower all wheel drive C10 that nobody else has. I feel like that's not a bad price for what most of these builds are costing these days. Now, of course your cost is gonna vary depending on what kind of deals you're gonna get, especially with the transmission and finding a C10 in general. Those costs vary because not everybody can find a Facebook marketplace for a lady and not everybody can find a $2,000 C10 that has a short bed. Now, I hope this video helps you guys out in your chassis swap C10 build. If you guys have any questions, make sure you comment down below. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys wanna see more content on the all wheel drive C10, possibly see this on Hot Rod Power Tour, make sure you like, comment, subscribe to stay tuned for all the content you're gonna see on this thing and all the other crazy builds we have here on Rustomod. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on the next episode.